proportions. To solve problems using proportions. This is section 7-2 of the text. Well, what is a proportion? Well, a proportion is not a ratio. It's actually an equation with ratios on both sides. An equation that states that two ratios are equal is called a proportion. Usually, you can write a proportion in one of two ways. You could write 2 is to 3 as 4 is to 6. Say it with me, ready? 2 is to 3 as 4 is to 6, or 2 is to 3 as 4 is to 6. Above, 2 and 6 are called the extremes. They're way out here on the extreme, like, outside. The extremes inside, the 3 and the 4 are called the means. Something interesting that we, we find out is that, um, we know and we can say that the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. Below, A and D are the means, B and C are the extremes. So we can say that AD equals BC. Why can we say that? How come? Well, what happens if I multiply the left side and the right side by BD? Let's see. I'm going to multiply this by BD over 1 and this by BD over 1. Now remember, I don't have to multiply both sides by 1 because I have an equation. And that's a, the tool. We, one of our, when we want to change a fraction, it's okay to walk up to, and you can go up to any fraction, 3 fifths and multiply by 1 without changing it, right? The one, and I get 9 over 15, it's still 3 fifths, right? But when I have an equation, I can multiply the left side and the right side by anything. It doesn't have to be 1. As long as whatever I do on this side, I do it on this side. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to multiply the left side and the right side by BD over 1. And I end up with ABD over B and CBD over D. Notice the D's cancel. B's cancel. I end up with AD equals CB or BC. Ah, there it is. So I can just now, I can see that I can multiply these guys on one side, multiply those guys on the other. Some people call it cross multiply. Let's not do that. Let's not call it that because then we use cross multiply, hand cross multiply, the Just extremes of means, yeah. So I can set up equations here. So we'll use this to solve some equations. I know that 3 times 4, 12, is going to equal 5 times x. Now I just divide by 5, cross multiply and divide. I don't like saying that, but I do it all the time. X is 12 fifths. What about here? 15A times 4 on one side equals negative 2 times 12, 21. Divide both sides by 15 times 4. And I get what my A equals. A equals whatever this mess is. Um, 2, 2 and 21 don't reduce, but I do get um, 7, 5. 7 tenths, negative 7 tenths. All right. Let's do some more here. We're going to get a little fancier here. Woo! Doggy! Um, of course, another way to solve this, you can multiply both sides here um, by 30, but it's the same thing because you're going to end up reducing, and so why bother going doing that when you can just do it? See, if I multiply it by 30 and by 30, 6 would cancel out, I'm having a 5 times this. 5 would cancel out, and I'm having a 6 times this, so I might as well just do it. 6 times 2n minus 3 equals 5 times n plus 2. So a lot of people just look right at it and they can do it in their head. 5 times n plus 2 you can see is 5n plus 10. 6 times 2n minus 3 is 12n minus 18. Subtract 5n from this side and you get 7n. Add 18 over here, you get 28. n is 4. So, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, right? And then there's some word problems. There's always going to be some word problems. That's we love these. This is this really uh, you know this is a fun man. It is a fun time. With a five-pound bag of flour, the cooking class can make 120 muffins. How many muffins can they make with a two-pound bag of flour? Hmm. Let's see. They have a muffin to flour ratio. They make 120 muffins with five pounds of flour. We want to know how many muffins they can make with 
two pounds of flour. The muffin to flour ratio will stay constant. Now here we're setting up a ratio without the same units, but that's fine because we have proportions now. We don't have just a single, you know, well, you wouldn't be able to reduce um, really, well, you could, but, ah, well, I'm not going to talk about it right now. All right. Um, so 120 is to 5 as x is to 2. Um, this muffin to flour, I mean, this ratio will have units. It's a muffin to flour unit is basically, basically what you'd say. Um, the muffin to flour ratio is 120 to 5. To solve it, we just do the same thing. 2 times 120 equals 5x. Divide both sides by 5, and we're done. How many 5s are going to 120? Can anybody guess? How many 5s are going to 100? 20, right? How many 5s are going to 20? 4. So 24 times 2 end up x equals 48. Alright, very nice. Now we're going to go to, uh, I think we have enough for time for one more problem. Oh, a couple more problems actually. Sweet. Oh no! It's asking me to find the ratio of x to y. Oh my god! Well, since we've been cross multiplying this thing we do, let's do it again. 4x plus y equals 5x minus y. Remember we're going to collect all the x terms on one side and then collect all the y terms on the other, okay? And so the x, this x term comes over here, and I have 4x minus 5x, I get x on this side. I subtract this 4y from here, negative 9y right here, right? And I want to get x over y, so I multiply both sides by 1 over y, and I get x over y equals, or divide both sides by y, negative 9 over 1. So let's make a little quick observation here, something interesting about ratios. Um, coolness, I'll call this. If I have um, a fraction like, um, let's see, um, 2 times 3 over 2 times 4 equals 3 times 3 over 3 times 4. Is this true? Well, yes it is, right? Because this is just 3 fourths when I reduce this, right? But notice, what, see if I can do something. Can I take this 4 and just put it up here? And do I still have an equivalent fraction? Yes, I do. Because look at the fours cancel the two, I end up having three over one on both sides. Um, but what you actually did is, if I multiply the left side and right side by four, doesn't that four come up over here? Yes, it does. And suppose I multiply both sides by two. Wouldn't it be like multiplying this by two and this by two? Wouldn't this two cancel out with this two? And, this, and that two kind of almost end up coming up over here? Yes, it would. What ends up happening with ratios are some pretty cool things. Um, look at a couple forms of this. If I show you the following ratio, um, A over B equals C over D, I multiply both sides by B, multiply this side by B, they cancel out, multiply this side by B, I end up with this, A over 1 equals CB over D. It's kind of like the B just jumped up to be next to the C. Now, I could also have multiplied both sides by 1 over C, right? If I multiply this side by 1 over C, the C's cancel out. And this side by 1 over C, the C comes down there. I end up with A over CB, 1 over D. It's kind of like that C just jumped out. Look at the difference between these two. The C just jumped out and landed over there. Well, that's a great tool for ratios. You can actually do that. You can take things. If, this is a, if there's factors here, you can just take them and drop them down there. In fact, you can take them and drop them down there. That's cool. That's a cool thing you can do. There's lots of stuff you can do. You can also flip this about this accent. Put this on this side and this whole thing on that side. Another thing you can do is, if A is to B is C is to D, you can actually say, well, well then A is to C is B is to D. And D is to C is B is to A. And B is to D is A is to C. And C is to A is D is to B. And A is to B is C is to D. And as long as these guys are on the top, these guys are on the bottom, these guys are on the top, these guys are on the bottom, and on the same side. So you can kind of just leave these guys as long as they are, these guys are diagonal opposite each other on this kind of like square kind of piece here. Um, you can kind of flip these guys around. So a quick way to solve a problem, if I was going to solve for x, if it was um, 3x over 8 plus 2 uh, equals, do I have enough time? Oh no, 52. 2 over m, I want to solve for x, just take that m, put it up, that 8 and put it up there. Take that 3 and put it down here, and I'm done. Oh my god, I did it. 